Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside the Cardinal Playbook, football coaches interview show with Tim Crone. I'm Rick Cole, and in a moment we'll be joined by Sean Weigel, the head coach of William Jewell College Football. Well, Tim, we went to Des Moines on Saturday. First time we played Drake University, at least that I can ever recall. Played pretty well, represented Jewell pretty well, I thought. Oh, we're an exciting football team. This is the first time we've had this many weapons on offense. Uh, if you're a football fan, you need to come out on Saturdays and watch the Cardinals play. They're multiple. They can do a lot of things. What were you most impressed about? Uh, let's start with offense. Well, I think offensively was the ability to have so many weapons in different formations and different looks it really presents a problem for the defense. And I was really impressed with that. Plus the fact I've been, I was telling you all, you had to listen to this all the way up to Des Moines, Iowa. But <laughs> our offensive line is actually where it should be for a Division II team. We still need a little more depth, but we're closer than we've ever been before. Trey Mask had 24 carries and over 100 yards, and uh, the sophomore uh, was uh, really the, the focus of the attack. Well, you know, I went out to the tailgate afterward while you were doing some work, and I had four people I've never met, and never, I didn't know him from second, and they said, we take that kid on our team right. every time. Right. He, he really had a good game. The other highlights, at least for me, were uh, the Orlando Ward block punt. We also got a 97-yard kick return from Anthony Mullen, who was going to be a complete weapon on offense for us. Not only on special teams, but again, he uh, made a couple of fine catches as well. He's one of the better skill players in the entire league, without a doubt. He's multiple. He can do a lot of things, you know. And uh, that's what I mean. Thomas Cook didn't really get a chance to play that much in this ballgame because of his injury to his hand. So, you know, in Garraway, I can go on and on right. about what we're looking at. Uh, Graf, the new kid, I uh, don't want to give it all away, but I'm pretty pleased with what we see so far offensively. Defensively, you know, I, I felt like we, we had our times. Yep. Uh, and I thought that we did bow our neck and uh, – you know, uh, the cramps and uh, the first game of the year with our D-backs the last two years have been somewhat amazing. Uh, but everybody went on the trip to play defense, play just about. Yeah. Defensively, I thought we had some kids step up, do some things that we weren't maybe expecting. Right. Had a couple of absences as well, but I think that's going to be a project through the year to try to improve on defense. And I think we'll have a large part of how we end up this year. Well, I really thought our defense, though, this year, seems to be a to uh, cut down as far as what they need to understand, and they seem to be able to execute it at a little bit higher level because they understand what they're trying to do. Let's hope that continues all year long, too. All right, Tim Crone will be back in just a moment with the head football coach of William Jewell College, Sean Weigel, on Inside the Cardinal Playbook. We are the first uh, independent franchisee of CarStar in the Kansas City area to be certified to repair the new F-150, the 2015. We've been repairing aluminum for many, many years, over 20, 30 years, but uh, now with the new F-150 rolling out, we came up with this clean room because of the specialized equipment and training that is needed for my employees to put the vehicle back to pre-accident condition. Fans, welcome to this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. It's my pleasure to be here with Coach, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit in this first segment about our game uh, this past Saturday, our opener up at Drake. Uh, I thought it was a really exciting game, uh, and I'm just going to let you roll because I know offensively and defensively you had some real bright spots. Yeah, yeah, there were. Um, it was uh, it was a, it was a fun game to be a part of. I mean, because you saw a team mature from one half to. To the next half offensively, and you saw you saw our defense come in in the first half and, and really do a great job in, in keeping a, a high-powered offense at, at check. And and uh, so you know there's there's a lot of really positive things. And and bottom line is you know you throw, look at our offense, defense, especially we're a good football team. You know, and, and uh, that's what I told the team yesterday. But the expectations that we get better, and good teams do that. Right. Good teams get better from week to week. And and uh, but yeah, there was. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't have been more proud with the team's effort. Um, you know, you couldn't ask for more. You know, we asked whatever we asked in this pregame. I, I asked my kid, whatever we asked you, you to give, you just need to give. And right. they did that. And um, so, you know, they played really hard. And we continue to play with that kind of effort and then eliminate some mistakes. We're going we're gonna to be all right. Weapons. And now, I've been doing this as long as you've been coaching. We've been kind of came together on this. As far as I'm concerned, I'm excited about the season. I'm really, as a fan, I just enjoy. You have weapons to work with now. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's not just one go-to guy. Um, we can put them in several different spots, and they are in several different spots. And it, it should make it difficult on defenses to, uh, to defend that. You know? How about your offensive line? How'd you feel about their performance? They did well. Um, you know, we did, we did really well. Actually, the their 
five of uh, the six that actually played um, graded in the uh, 80 percent uh, oh, higher. Good. And, um, you know, we, we've got to uh, continue to get better. We had a young one in there uh, to begin with, uh, uh, Josh Blocklinger, and, and uh, he had some bright spots, but he was also a little timid. Mm -hmm. Yep, first game. Sure. Lights and, and, uh, but Freshman's we, a freshman. Yeah. Any way you cut it, we, shape it. Yeah, and, uh, but he's, he'll get through that. You know, we talked, and he, we just expect him to be better, and he will be. You know, with the heat, and it was brutal. It was a brutal day to play, yeah. and, uh, and that's a little bit older turf. And it makes it a little bit tougher. Uh, but uh, you, just about everybody made the trip on defense played. I mean, you played a lot of kids yeah. on defense. You want to talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, that was kind of a game plan to roll them through, especially on the defensive line. And, uh, you know, to keep fresh and keep keep firing at them. And uh, so we did that and had some guys really step up and, and do some, some good things there. Uh, Keir Stamp uh, uh, had a really good game for us at the defensive end position along with Robert Hurd. Um, did some. They did some good things, and were relentless, and kept bringing it, and kept bringing it. And well, the, you know, the Stamp kid was a little bit unknown until this ball game. Yeah, uh, I thought he did a really good job. I, I go, wow, where's he been? Yeah. Almost type yeah. of attitude as far as doing the game. He really played well. Right, and that's and uh, he'd moved from linebacker, right, he'd moved him down, and so now you have a linebacker that has maybe a little quicker get off. And, yeah, right, and uh, that can cause problems. Right. And especially teams, I think we got to give Zane some uh, kudos. We were talking before the show started. I really felt like he got us out of trouble twice where they could maybe – he really stretched the field for us, which really helped us. You had to be pleased with the, both the both kickers in that situation. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, Zane Zane was hitting it uh, really well, and, and um, uh, he did a great job. And, you know, Mr. Consistent there. And Brandon did a great job as well. Um, and uh, you know maybe maybe it was we limited their warm up a little bit you know uh -huh. I told them let's not go out until five okay well you had and to it's hot as it, it was, yeah. people didn't realize and I told uh, my wife on the way I said it was brutal it was, it was really brutal and you got to expect that uh, you know uh, you know let's talk a little bit again about the offense I th I saw real growth in the second half and I really thought I really thought the quarterback really really grew up you want to uh, talk a little bit about that I and he was under pressure at times yeah. I thought he did some, made some real good choices. Yes, he did, and uh, you know, there was a couple times that he didn't take the sack, got rid of the ball, and and uh, but uh, you know, we talked uh, yesterday as a, as an offense, we need to we need to keep him clean. Mm -hmm. You know, he did get hit uh, too often, and um, you know that was he, he was kind of a tough guy mm -hmm. that day, which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We don't want him to have to be a tough guy right. to keep getting back up, but. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was good to see him get back up and continue to play and, and play at a high level. Um, and uh, you know, we came out that second half and had made some adjustments. And, and um, when you do that, and then you are able to execute them, that's a good thing. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I was alluding to. You know, I, I really felt like that you guys made good adjustments. I was very impressed on both sides of the ball, and I thought the kids were able to execute those uh, adjustments. Uh, you know, talk about our opponent a little bit, and, and why don't you throw in two cents? I thought they were a good, fine football team. Yeah, um, little they're they're big. They yeah. had some had some big kids, and their tight ends are. I mean, they're they're big. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw them in person warming up. Or yes, something, but I'm like, we oh, talked to one of the dads smokes. after the game. They they and the tight ends did hurt us because they yeah. were good athletes. Yeah, and they really uh, center a little bit their attack. Of breaking up a little bit with their tight ends, and we'll see that in this league. I've I've seen in our league yeah. several schools that really are tight end oriented. Yeah, and that's uh, another thing. They just they had so much experience too. You know, with the eighteen red shirts, you know, there there was one junior starter on their defense. You know, so that's that's a veteran. Group. You know, but I also saw that our growth was there too with our mm -hmm. red shirts. Yeah. Because I've been here with you long enough to see that uh, you know the when we got behind a little bit, the the ship could have sunk pretty fast. It didn't sink. No. You know, matter of fact, we were in the ball game until the very end. A couple plays here and there, missed coverage, uh, those kind of things. But we we're, we're there. Right. And against a good football team who's yeah. a division above us, yeah. which we don't, we're not looking for any uh, purple hearts here. We're looking no. for for wins, just right. like anybody else. But I think overall, but we got to give the other team. Uh, you know, I thought Drake had a good club, they, and uh, you know they, they came did. in uh, what seven four seven three yeah. last year, so they they got a good team. Uh, in the next segment, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what's coming up this Saturday. I'm excited for this Saturday. I know you have a. Uh, a lot of friends and a lot of people that you're close to that are over there in Colorado. And, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in the next second. Members of the Cardinal Sportscasters Club include these merchants. 
Five William Jewell College graduates are valued employees of Advanced Logistics and Fulfillment, a local company that assembles point of purchase displays. Advanced Logistics and Fulfillment, 8800 East Underground Drive in Kansas City. This is Sabrina McIntosh of U.S. Health Advisors, where our motto is hope, helping other people every day. We'll provide you with alternatives to your health care issues. Get in touch with us today at U.S. Health Advisors, sabrina.mackintosh at ushadvisors.com. Welcome, Cardinal fans, this second segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And we're going to, uh, this Saturday, we're going to kick it off at noon. We're going to talk about that at the end of this segment. But uh, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, Colorado School of Mines. We played them. It's kind of become a pretty much a, a non-conference game for us. It's almost like a conference game. We play them so much. And uh, your uh, friend is now in Montana, which is, uh, you know, you had a lot of, you know, uh, common interest. And he had a lot going. I know last year you were really fired up to play well there because I talked to you before the game. But uh, this is a great club coming in. Yeah, really is. Um, they're solid all the way around um, from an offensive standpoint. Uh, you know, they're they're uh, an up-tempo offense, but they're just so efficient, incredibly efficient with the ball. Their quarterback, uh, um, he's, he's you know, you don't want to say he's fun to watch because he's just so efficient and accurate the way he plays. And, and uh, you know, if you can say you can have fun watching your opponent play, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want, it to, you want yeah. it to stop. But he's, I mean, it just, it is, he's a good football player and you like seeing good, good football and, and uh, they do a great job. They haven't missed a beat, it uh, doesn't look like uh, with the coaching change and, and um, you know, and, and that says a lot about uh, um, what, where they've come from, you know, that there weren't a lot of wholesale changes. You know what I like about you and you on the program though? Your non-conference games, there's no cupcakes. No. And I'm not too sure in a lot of instances the teams we play aren't as good, if not better, than teams in our conference. Do you, is, do you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're tough. There's some the upper echelon of our conference that, are, that uh, could play with anybody, you know. And, and, but, but you look at Drake and you look at Colorado Mines, they're, they're a top-20 team for a reason. Uh, you know, they were up 49-14 at half last week. And, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it, is, it is what it is. We'll play them, you know, and find out where we are. But we expect to, to win, too. And that's uh, something, you know, we, with those expectations that every week, it's something we're, we're going to win the game. And uh, you know our pay players believe that and prepare like that, and and uh, those are kind of the, the standard that's been set now. Well, you know, you guys decided to go to Division Two, and I, I've had a lot of people come up and talk to me about that, and you've heard it through your time here too. But you know, I, I think that's the way to build the program. You know, I I see real growth, and let's just take the first game of the year when I said the ship could have gone down, and we had those red shirts, and there used to be the type and level of competition that we're used to playing. Didn't you feel that way that we were really benefited from some of the kids that have been here for a while and the red shirt program that we finally yeah. now have? Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's something division two is where we need to be. Right. And, uh, you know, it's uh we have a niche and, and uh um, it's something really special that not a lot of schools and across the country is in. We're a private school playing division two football, you know, and, and there's a handful of us and you you take a look at our location and where we are, it's attractive. Right. To people. So um, yeah, it's where we need to be. Well, you know, like I said, sometimes when you're evaluating a program, uh, and yeah, you got to do it by wins and losses because the ultimate is wins, but are you getting to where you want to go so you can get to that W in those playoff games, in those uh, national rankings? And mm -hmm. I really feel like Jill's doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah, I do too. And, I, and we're, we're getting there. Yeah, you're getting there. And, you know, I know I've had a lot of people say, man, your schedule's hard. Well, yeah, we're Division Two. We play people. And that's why we're Division Two. That's how that works. That's right. You know, you don't right. play uh, Sisters of the Poor. Right. I mean, you play people that are good. And you've got to feel good. And, and again, let's talk a little bit about effort. Uh, and uh, I didn't get a chance to see any of the uh, preseason workouts and stuff, but I was really impressed with the effort, everybody. It was a hot day. Everybody was cramped up. Uh, I will ask you this question, and I, I didn't prep you for this one. What do you think? Uh, you know, last year we had cramps all over the place with our D-backs, and we got cramps again this year all over with our D-backs at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Now, I got it. It was hot. I yeah. got that. But uh, you, you might want to tell the fans about that because, you know, I've had, I had a couple of parents say, man, how come we're getting cramps all the time? Maybe they want to hear from their coach what, what, what he thinks. Yeah. Well, I wish I knew the uh, magical formula to make right. it go away because we'd certainly do that. But, uh, you know, it's just you, you got to really, especially when it's that, that hot, you, you can't 
just start taking care of your body the day before. That is something that needs to happen 72 hours before that we're eating right and doing all those those things. I think we had about half as many as we had the year before. Mm -hmm. though, I think you did too. Yeah, and uh, um, so you know that's that's something you know we worked through. The, the other team had them as well. Oh yeah, um, it was a hot so, day, and uh, and I, they were home, so they even have more bodies at their disposal. You right. know, <laughs> right. that they can put in there. And when you're on the road, that it's. it's you're, you're playing everybody you take. You bet. And uh, so, you know, that can catch up to you a little bit. Well, talking about fans, that was kind of a lead-in question today because we're going to end up to d today's segment. I think uh, you're a great recruiter, and you're great with people. I think that's one of your biggest triggers, if not your best strength, in my opinion. But you might want to talk to fans. They were there in full force, and they were on the hot side, by the way. Yeah. And i got to give them kudos. We gotta, I get, uh, Some of them probably cramped up just yeah, sitting there. No doubt. So yeah. we need to probably give them some uh, some ups and uh, thank them for being there. But you might want to talk about this first home game and yeah. your feel as a head coach. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, first, yeah, first and foremost, it was great to have them there. And I think there's a group of parents that, they got an RV or something and whatnot, and and uh, and made the trip, and we hope that continues because that that helps us. And, oh, it uh, sure does. You know, and, and that's one thing at home is we got to we got to continue to build on that at home, um, and um, because I, here's the adjustment we were we were third from last in home field advantage according to the massive ratings. Third from last in Division Two on home field. And it's really bugging you. I want to get that out because we talked about that yeah. before we started the shows this yeah. year. And it's okay, Coach, to tell them that bugs you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it does, and, and uh, you know that's something that's that's hollow ground out there, and, and it's a special place. So we've changed a lot of things up of how we're going to uh, approach the field and take the field and 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 do some different things and move signs so our our tailgaters can see the team warming up and and switched into the field and and uh, you know it's it's a it's got to be an entertaining uh, brand of football and I think it is and uh, you know everybody that was there last week needs to be back and bring a friend yeah absolutely you know I was impressed with it. Uh, the tailgating that went on at Drake because right behind us at the press mm -hmm. box and they really had a nice little set up there and uh, then we went out to eating that's the kind of atmosphere I want for William Jewel and uh, we have a good fan base and uh, you do a great job of promoting the program so uh, for everybody uh, don't forget that 12 o'clock start 12 today great uh, one of the top 20 teams in the country will be coming in to play us uh, and again we will continue to play that schedule people we're a division two that's who we are that's what we do so hopefully to we'll see everybody here and that will end this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. In 1902, Carrier introduced the world to modern air conditioning, allowing people to live comfortably anywhere. Get ready for our next big cool idea. Now the people who invented home comfort as we know it are thinking about the specifics of your home and how you live in it. What if you could control your home's energy efficiency with a fingertip or just let us do all the work for you? Well, what if is now what is. Carrier, turn to the experts. Call your local comfort experts, Hales Heating and Cooling, at 816-630-0200. Welcome back inside the Cardinal Playbook. We've heard from head coach Sean Weigel now, Tim, and uh, the Colorado Mines coming up Saturday. It's, again, remember, a noon start, but that's a ranked team, and they've given us trouble through the last few years. You're right, my good friend. Uh, they're the top 20 team. Uh, they're the type of team, though, I think that Jill needs to play to see where they're at. Uh, people, we're doing, like I said earlier, you know, we're Division Two. We play Division Two people. That's who we are. We need to get used to and be able to compete against them. And uh, Colorado School of Mines is a top-notch program. You know, very seldom they're, they're not in the top 20 in the country Division Two. So this will be a good test for us. Okay, they've got an excellent quarterback coming in. So that will be, as far as, if you like football and like entertaining football, with, I think probably a lot of offense on both sides probably ought to come Saturday. Now that you've had a chance to talk to Coach Weigel, you kind of like what he's doing, don't you? I love what he's doing. I think uh, – I think he's doing the right thing, too. I think he's putting his kids in the best positions for them to excel. And him and his coaching staff, both on offense and defense. And our specialty teams are pretty good. Now, I think uh, for small school, he does a great job on the specialty team side of it. So, you know, it, nobody says this is going to be easy, but we are definitely improving. And again, Saturday will be a noon start, so you can join us on the William Jewell College Sports Network. Our pregame will start at 11.30, and the kickoff is at noon from Green Stadium. And you'll see a lot of new things, I think, on Saturday when you come out to the stadium. As Coach Weigel talked about, they're going to try some different things as far as approaching this home game, including new uniforms. The new uniforms will be broken out on Saturday. The new uniforms are slick willies. 
<laughs> That's all I got to say with Slick Willis. Sp spoken from a man who knows a little bit about being slick. Uh, we'll uh, see you on Saturday on the William Buell College Sports Network, 1130 pregame and noon kickoff. And thanks again for joining us on Inside the Cardinal Playbook.